Here we go. Okay. Who's going to be first this morning? Who's going to be first this morning? Good morning, Patsy. And good morning to old Janet. You just got in the second too late to be doing the sermon next week. Patsy got in before you. Uh, so Patsy's on next week for sermon. Would have been Janet with minutes to spare. Morning, Cam and Carol. Morning, Murray. Morning, Vaughn and Lori. Hopefully the weather's a little better down your neck of the woods than it is up this way. Uh, Wayne and Michelle, morning. Joyce, good morning. Morning, Wayne. And fellas, great to see you. Uh, John's there from Peterborough. Folks from downtown Trowbridge. Port Lambton, Chatham. Like Janet usually says, the pews are filling up fast. Morning to Huey and Bonnie. Yeah, it's about the same foggy and rainy here too, Vaughn. Not much different. Morning, Doug and Lise. Morning to the oars. Dennis and Diane, I'll wave to you across the river. And good morning to Bobby and Wanda down in Elmer. Morning, Harry. Don and Betty down in St. Louis. Great to have you again with us today. Hopefully everything's good down your way. Morning, Myrtle. Thanks for that Christmas wish there, Myrtle. Okay. I have a new a new additional secretary, long distance secretary. He says I've been on for sixty seconds and forty people are watching today. Well I think mine says three minutes and some, but we've got quite a few Morning, Velma, and Kim, Don Elmer as well. Morning, Marie. Morning to Judy and Tanya. And morning to Murray and Catherine, John and Debbie. Yes, I, I pulled out the red shirt for Christmas Day usually wear th uh, Valentine's Sunday and Christmas Sunday, Debbie, so might look like the Cardinal, uh, but uh, it is a nice red one. And there's Kenny signing in from out in BC. And Mary Martin, good to have you with us again this week. How's the weather out in the in BC these days, Kenny? We kind of keep things up to date on the on the TV, but it changes day to day. And good morning to Lloyd and Eleanor. Cam beat you to the front front row there, uh, Lloyd, but hopefully he'll make room for you. 
Fiona and Erlen, great to see you. Yes, it is a little cool out uh, there, Erlen, but stay in where it's nice and warm and we'll be all set. We're doing pretty good out there, John Marie. Morning, Metropolis of Listwell. Hopefully that uh, weather changes a little bit. Morning, Kevin. Okay, Lloyd, you better move over, Kevin's. Kevin's coming in. Great to see the folks. Maureen, to, morning to Maureen and Eric. They're okay. We got Kevin, Lloyd, and Cam now all in the front row. We're we're good to go. Morning, Faye. Great to see you, Kevin. I can see it being Christmas Sunday, and my hands are full with the front pew already. Morning, to Lauren and Gary. Harvey and Sandra, great to see ya. Oh, Corey, great to see ya, Corey. How you been doing these days? And Barb, great to have you join us from Alberta. Liz and Floyd, morning, great to see ya. I don't suppose you've got that motorcycle out these days, Corey. Something happened. I'm not sure whether I'm still there. I said out in St. Louis they couldn't hear me. Hmm? I don't know. Oh, okay, they're back on. I think there was just a little bit. I think maybe there was a little bit of a glitch there. Thanks for that uh, uh, update there, uh, Betty. Um, John says I'm loud and clear, so that's good. Okay, that's good. Everything's good. Morning, Pam. Okay, we thought maybe we had a little bit of a glitch there, but we're moving on progressively. Morning, Marg. Some people may argue with that comment, Cam. Cam says, I think you're all there. Well, some, sometimes somebody might question that, Cam, but at the present time, I think we're doing good. We've got about five minutes before we start into the service.
Good morning to the Luddingtons. And good morning, Debbie, Sean, Cooper, and, and good morning to Carol Lawson. And good morning to the Ducks. How are you, Greg? For those uh, before we turn in the service, it's uh, Erlen was saying it's a little cold outside. Well, I've got a, a little bit of a, a, a lamp come for this morning because uh, I've got a little little somebody on my lap this morning. So for those who just move that down. That was Quincy sitting on my lap. Oh, there you go. Can you see? There you go. There. There he is. There you go. You can say hello to everybody. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Okay. Okay. Morning, Donna. So, uh, Quincy, Carol Quincy says hello to Baxter. Yeah, John says, good morning, Quincy. There we go. Morning, Gladys. Morning, Barb, Art, from downtown Kenlow. Boy, we're we're stretching out to all all ends of the province this morning. I think we're having a little bit of of, of glitch at times. Uh, some people are hearing okay. Some people are not hearing okay. Uh, morning, Kathy. I think maybe it's the weather this morning seems to be cutting in and out on us. Morning, Edna. Norm. That's good, uh, good Wanda. Glad that the the volume is back for you. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Sean. Harry and Sheila, great to have you with us this morning. Got a minute or so before we start in. Morning, Donnie and Joyce. And good morning to Elaine. Elaine, have you heard any word from the folks in the south? We've come to the at uh, 10.30 
uh, moment. And so at this time on this uh, Christmas Sunday, fourth Sunday of uh, Advent, actually our Christmas communion service as well, and this is our 34th online service during this pandemic year. I'd like to welcome everyone, those watching live and those who are, are watching in uh, throughout the week, this coming week. And as we begin, a Merry Christmas uh, to everyone uh, and greetings to all as we prepare in those last uh, a few days uh, leading up to Friday and Christmas Day. As we begin uh, with our service this day, let us start in our usual uh, manner with our gathering, come in, come in and sit down. of the family we are lost and we are found and we are a part of the family children and elders middlers and teens singles and doubles and in between strong 85ers and streetwise 16 for we are a part of the family Readers and shoppers, long time and new, nobody here has a claim on a few. And whether we're many or whether we're few, we are a part of the family. Come in, come in and sit down, you are a part of the family. We are lost and we are found. Are a part of the family. God comes to us in the cry of a child. Let your heart prepare a welcome. God comes to us in the whisper of a loving mother. Let every heart prepare and embrace. God comes to us, abides in us. Let every heart prepare to receive the Christ. Let us worship the God who has come, who is here, and who will come again, this day and always. And let us join together in our opening hymn. For those of you who have your hymn book, it's number uh, 27. McKinley will have the words up there for you. The favorite Christmas hymn, Joy to the World.
as we have journeyed through our season of Advent, as we have lit our candles each week of hope and peace and joy, continuing today to relight those and light the candle, our fourth candle, our candle of love. And let us begin as we light our candles. And of course, as everyone knows, the lighter decides to run out just as you go to light those candles. We light the candles of hope, peace, and joy. And, oh God, we now light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. We are here, your angel Gabriel, and witness to the faith of Mary. Fill us with your grace and light. This Advent, we respond to God's beckoning to us as well. Revealing God, visit us and fill us with your spirit. Bring your good news to life within us. Give us courage to carry our light into the shadows of this world. Amen. As we turn to our scripture reading uh, for this fourth Sunday of Advent, but also for this Christmas Sunday. I thought this year, without having uh, many Christmas services to attend, it would be great to uh, hear of the Christmas story this day. And so we turn to the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place for Curinerus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May God add his blessings to the readings of this, his holy word, and to his name be praise and glory, this day and always. Amen. I want to share this uh, week with you another Christmas carol as recorded a number of years ago by the with, on our church tape. Bruce Robertson sings for us today uh, a 
feast appropriately fit for this uh, Christmas uh, Sunday. We're all one family at Christmas. Great to hear Bruce again and a great message uh, for this Christmas season, especially uh, in these difficult days. We're all one family at Christmas. As we pause now for our prayers, we we'll also share in our memorials in this day. First of all, I received word this past week of the death of Don Cinnamon, the 1st of December, in Arizona. And uh, many of you will uh, remember uh, John uh, from his days in Wingham and Rockster and Seaforth. And uh, we remember him this day and uh, always enjoyed a good conversation with, with John and always a smile uh, coming from him. So we keep the uh, Cinnamon family in our thoughts and prayers in this time. I keep in uh, touch with uh, Val, his daughter, quite often. And also... Uh, remembering the uh, Sanderson family and, and Patsy's on on this morning as well in the death this uh, past week or a week ago of uh, Dennis Wick. That was her uh, uh, brother-in-law, her sister Sanders' uh, husband. And so we keep them in our thoughts and prayers uh, this day as well. And that is in a moment of silence, remember them. Blessed are they indeed, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Also on this uh, Christmas Sunday, normally in our regular congregations of Gory and Rockster, we have Christmas poinsettias, memorial Christmas poinsettias, to decorate the church, and we remember those of our congregation who have received their heavenly reward. And uh, this, the list is quite long and extensive, and it uh, would take probably an extra hour to read both the Gory and the Rockster lists uh, online this year. And so now let's now, uh, as we continue on this uh, Christmas uh, Sunday and this Christmas memorial, remember those family and friends who are no longer with us to share, not only this day, but the generations that have gone before us. Let us now in a moment of silence, remember those closest and dearest to us. Let us pray. And we cherish them in our hearts always. Amen. As we continue to uh, 
share with our, in preparation for our morning prayers this day, uh, we remember our joys and our concerns. First of all, a shout out to Cam and Carol Edgar, uh, who were celebrating their 52nd wedding anniversary uh, last week. Uh, there were some uh, great uh, pictures posted on uh, Facebook by, uh, by Debbie, and they were looking good. And so a shout out to them for that special time. For birthdays, uh, this uh, uh, past week, uh, Florence Dickinson celebrated her 93rd birthday. Gwen Brown was celebrating a birthday on the 16th. Uh, Bill Woodley was also celebrating a birthday this past week. On the 18th was Brendan Chester. And uh, yes, yesterday was uh, uh, Beat Lunenberger. And actually, uh, uh, Susan's sister, Jean Baird, had a birthday yesterday, and actually her husband, Dave Baird, has a birthday today. So their birthdays are a day apart, so we shout out for both of them. Uh, tomorrow being the 21st, uh, Evelyn Dixon has a, a birthday tomorrow, and we give a shout out to her. And as we shared with Cam and Carol's wedding anniversary, as we all know, Carol has a birthday coming up on Christmas Day. So anniversaries and birthday wishes to everyone this day and perhaps there are others that uh, we have missed. I know I have a few coming up for the latter part of the month uh, and we'll remember them uh, next week during our service. But a shout out to those uh, today who are celebrating. As we remember those who in body, mind and spirit need uh, their strength in this time, we continue to keep Mara Gibbons in our thoughts and prayers as she remains in sick kids and uh, in, in London, uh, I think she's going to end up possibly having some treatment on Christmas Day as well, uh, but uh, things are improving there for her. We continue to keep uh, Kevin Townsend in our thoughts and prayers, and we also keep uh, Wayne Sanderson in our thoughts and prayers as Wayne continues to go through his uh, radiation uh, treatments. Uh, I noticed Gladys is on, Peacock is on this morning and hopefully the pain is subsiding after that uh, surgery that she had and we keep her in our thoughts and prayers as well. Also, uh, uh, we keep uh, Bob Daigle in our thoughts and prayers. Many in the Rockstar community and around will know, uh, know Bob. Uh, had a chat with him yesterday on the phone and had a message from uh, Dennis this morning that Bob gets out of hospital tomorrow. So we continue to keep him in our thoughts and prayers uh, in these days. So let us now focus our hearts and minds unto God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we pause on this Christmas Sunday, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, and as we prepare later on to gather around your table, we thank you for the opportunity to come together, even though at a distance, through modern technology, we come together as one. For in this day, no matter where we are or how we join together, we are one family at Christmas, as the song says. We thank you for the many blessings that we receive in each day, but especially as we have journeyed through Advent, preparing for the great news of the Christmas morn. And as we continue in these difficult days of this pandemic, as we see the numbers, especially in Ontario, continue to increase as we see them across Canada and the United States increase. And as we look to the possibility of after, uh, after Christmas of the province of Ontario going red and being in lockdown again, we ask for your strength, your support. We ask for your assistance that we may each ask each other for help and support to uplift each one of us in these difficult times. As we hear of the vaccine being distributed as fast as can be, we know that eventually there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. But right now, gracious God, help us to continue to isolate and be safe in this holiday season. And gracious God, we share with those who are celebrating in this day and also those who in body, mind, and spirit need your strength. And we remember those that we have mentioned by name, but also there may be others. Be with them in their difficulty. 
and maybe some that are, are isolating because of, of having contact with others who are been dealing with COVID. Be with them as they isolate in these diff, in these times, which is difficult now with this season of Christmas also. And in the silence of our own hearts, we lift our prayers to you. Lord, hear these our prayers and continue in your love to answer. Be with us in each day as we once again prepare in the coming days for the joyous good news of the Christmas morn as we share and follow the star that will lead to the manger and we see the joy of the Christmas morn. And as we continue to share in that joy, we lift our hearts together in the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Share with you a few uh, few announcements. Uh, now to uh, uh, to lead us into the rest of our service. I hope I notice that some are still having some some technical uh, technical difficulties, uh, but uh, I hope that things uh, continue to uh, uh, go as we usually are. Uh, one thing that I didn't get a chance to mention last week as we shared uh, in, in the service uh, with our pop mod, with our pop cans, uh, we also at times have people drop off what we refer to as adult beverage cans. And those are se separated and put out separately. And of course, we return them to the respective places. And that money is usually given to our area food bank. And so uh, after uh, we had our collection, uh, I can announce that we had $482 to donate to our local food bank uh, this year from those extra cans that we don't put in with the load that goes uh, to London. And so that was 482 uh, what we delivered to a food, food bank this year for assistance. Also, as I mentioned in the last couple of weeks, uh, difficulty with... Uh, having enough volunteers and so forth, whether, whether we'll be able to continue our program or not, and we will decide that uh, come the new year. So if you're interested in helping uh, on that first uh, Saturday of each month pick up cans, uh, then that would be appreciated. If we don't have enough volunteers uh, to assist in that fashion, we will have to uh, uh, discontinue uh, our, uh, our pop can drives. And so just leave that for your own interest. Also, during the season of, of Advent, we have been talking about a reverse Advent uh, and the, the list of things as we pack an item each day in a box and that goes to the food bank. We are not able to deliver those uh, boxes to the food bank until the 31st of December. That's the day that they set aside for us to deliver them. And so if you have a box that you have finished or we're planning on finishing a box, you can deliver those boxes to our place here at 2055 Princess Street and uh, Lauren Mann and I will be delivering those to the food bank on the morning of December 31st. So if you have a box already packed and want to drop it off, just let us know and uh, drop it off here or uh, get it to us uh, sometime next week after Christmas. Also a reminder uh, that uh, Christmas Eve service uh, it may not be live stream, it just may be I've got a, an old Christmas Eve cantata to present to you for Christmas Eve. I'm not sure whether we're going to live stream or whether we're just going to post it for everyone to watch uh, that evening on, as you feel fit to watch. Uh, that way we won't have a lot of difficulties. So uh, that will be up there for you Christmas evening after 7 o'clock uh, on uh, this coming Thursday before Christmas morning. There will be no Christmas morning service this year, but we will be doing our usual live stream 
uh, next Sunday at the usual time. As we prepare for our communion into the rest of our service, we will share in our meditation and then move into our communion service. Let us pray. Gracious God, in these moments as we meditate upon your word, may you open our hearts and minds to the understanding of that word, now and always. Amen. A word that came across my mind uh, this week that kind of sums up, I think, with what's going on is the term inconvenient. This seems like an adequate description of Christmas this year. Or we could say tiresome, difficult, problematic, awkward, undesirable, troublesome, bothersome. Sounds kind of fitting, does it, with all those descriptions. The typical parties and gatherings we would normally be looking forward to will either not be happening or be drastically altered. Our Christmas open house here that we always have at the Congregation Inn hasn't happened and won't be happening. But next year we'll be able to join in again. Of course, we still continue with Mass and social distancing, feeling uneasy being around people, sharing foods and drinks. All this can turn a typically joyous occasion into an unnerving one. But let us pause for a moment on this Sunday before Christmas to reflect upon how God allows inconveniences to invade our lives. But he provides unexpected blessings to compensate for those inconveniences. We heard our Christmas scripture this morning, and nothing was more inconvenient for Mary and Joseph than no place in the inn. Talk about inconvenient, not having a place to stay, not having a place when you're expecting a baby. But a manger was supplied, and you heard the story this morning, how the shepherds came, and worshipped at that manger. It was an inconvenience for Mary and Joseph, but God provided. He did it for Joseph and Mary, and he'll do it for us too when we exhibit faith and trust like they did. Our Christmas may seem to be inconvenient this year, but that doesn't mean it's a lost cause. There are still blessings and positive ideas to focus on. So let's make the most of it, even though we can't be together with family or friends. During this year, we have prayed for everything going on with the virus. We have prayed that none of us get the virus, but many have. We have prayed that it would not affect our church, but it has. We have prayed that our, our kids would be in school, and they have for a while, but as things are looking come the new year, they're not going to be for a while. My point is this. Just because things are not going the way we want it to, does that not mean, does that, not mean that, that God does not care? It is easy to find all the negatives going on right now. But do not forget who we are celebrating. The other night, Susan and I watched one of those classic Christmas programs, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. He felt he was bothered with all the celebrating and, and he thought if he could steal Christmas, it would be an inconvenience for the Who's in Whoville and they would not have the joy they displayed each year. But to his, to, to his surprise, after he took all the presents, all the decorations, the baubles, the boobles, the trees, the food, and even the Who Beast, he hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. 
it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. You could say that this pandemic this year is our Grinch, which has stolen our Christmas, and perhaps has even stolen the Who Beast from your kitchen table. But as the Grinch closes off with his reflections, maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long as we have hands to grasp it. Yes, Christmas, we find this year, won't come from a store because a lot of us can't get there to do the shopping. But we'll be celebrating. We will always, there will always be a Christmas if we stand heart to heart and hand in hand. And although we can't, we can't stand that close together in person, in faith and in love. In the fellowship we have in this time of inconvenience, when we worship together in the name of the infant, the name of Christ, the child. May we continue to have Christmas in our hearts, holding on to each other through phone calls, through prayers, through long distance conversations. It doesn't come from a store. Christmas means not a little bit more, but a lot more. The birth of our Savior. May God bless us, continue to bless us in these difficult times. May He continue to help us get through this inconvenience this Christmas, so that in the days, weeks, and months ahead, we may join together in fellowship and in love, closer than six feet. But for right now, let us stand heart to heart. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we come into your presence this day, when we look at all the, the negative difficulty in our lives, we also look to the positive understanding that Christmas is coming. We have journeyed through Advent, and in a few days, the Christ child will be with us. And we will celebrate the joy of that day, although not in the traditional manner but in our hearts and in the fellowship one with another in different ways at different times. God bless us in these moments now and in the coming days. For we ask it in your name. Amen. And as we prepare for our communion service this day, to share around the table of the Lord at this Christmas time, let us join together when I think one of the probably best loved carols of the Christmas season. The hymn book is number 38, and in tradition within our congregations, we sing the first three verses before communion, and then we close off with the last verse. Let us join together as McKinley puts the words up to the hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night.
And so we come this day as we gather round the table of the Lord and we remember that night in which he was betrayed and gathered with his, his disciples he took bread and broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you and after they had eaten he lifted up the, the cup and said this is the cup of the new covenant my blood which is shed for you for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do remember me until I come again. And so we gather this day also in celebration of his birth, of his death and of his resurrection in the knowledge of eternal life for each of us. And so we come this day gathered around our own tables, isolated from one another but in fellowship and in love with one another through Christ our Savior. The elements have been prepared. And as we prepare, let us once again focus our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, as we gather around your table, as we share of the elements before us, we remember not only your birth this day, but we also remember the night in which you were betrayed, your crucifixion, but how in three days you rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And so because of that, we have eternal life with you when our earthly journey has ended. And so we come this day and give thanks and ask for your blessing upon these elements and the many forms in which they take representing the body and blood of Christ, our Savior. We give thanks this day that in unity we may join together, even though separated. For we ask now for your blessing, and in your name we pray. Amen. And so we come this day, and remember that night in which he was betrayed, and after he would eaten with his disciples, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And he also lifted up the cup of the covenant, saying, this is my blood, which is shed for you, for as often. As you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do remember me until I come again. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things have been prepared. All are welcome to share around this table, no matter race, color, or religion. For this day, we are all children of God. We are all as the words of our anthem earlier said, we are all one family at Christmas. And as we gather around to share these elements this day, we are all the children of God and blessed by him. And so we take bread and we break it saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Feed on it in your hearts with thanksgiving this day.
and we also lift up the cup. The cup of the new covenant. The blood of Christ which was shed for us. May we also this day feed on our hearts with thanksgiving. The blood of Christ which was shed for you. Drink ye all of it. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have blessed us this day by calling us to your table, to allowing us to partake of this communion, symbols representing your body and blood, and the knowledge of the resurrection. In faith we have come, not by creed, or denomination, but by faith as children of God. Continue to bless us this day as you have blessed us through these elements. Continue to bless us in the days as we prepare for the Christ child. And bless us each day as we continue to journey through this time of this pandemic in the weeks and months ahead. We ask now for that blessing. Amen. And as we close off our communion service, uh, this time let us share with the uh, last uh, last verse of, uh, of that hymn. And then we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, McKinley might get upset with me. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, do the last verse, and then very quietly we're going to go back and sing the first verse again as kind of our, our closing time together. everyone in the days ahead have a blessed Christmas blessings to you and to all your loved ones once again thank you for the opportunity to come into your home this day and every day to share the good news of Christmas morning thank you for the opportunity to share the word of God blessings to each of you as we journey in the coming days. And as we close off today, I'm, I'm going to go away from our go now in peace as we usually close and share with you and you know, let us join together in a very solemn and quiet first verse of Silent Night and Holy Night as we close off this Christmas Sunday service. Blessings to all. Stay safe as we see the numbers increasing. It is a difficult time. May God go with you and hold him in the palm of his hand this day and always. And let us join together now. I'm going to turn down. In fact, I think we're going to do something. I'm going to hit the first note and we're going to do it a cappella. I think that will be the best way to close off this service. Hearing it in McKinley has the first verse up there for us. Blessing to all as we share now. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, 
sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. God bless, and may God go with you this day and always.